Okay, thank you. I'd like to call this meeting to order and welcome everyone here this afternoon. It's lovely to have a full council chamber. Doesn't happen that often, but it's nice to see. You. So thank you guys for coming. I'm going to, re, uh, I'm going to ask if there's any disclosure of pecuniary interest. Disclose it now. Hearing none. We're going to get right into the meeting. And the first thing I'm going to ask is uh, when you're talking, please talk into the mic. Um, at the podium, there's a handheld mic, and uh, Terry will make sure it's on. So we are on video, and there is, uh, believe it or not, people out there that uh, do listen to the council meeting. So that's one of the uh, issues that we have, uh, where people don't talk into the mic, and uh, our uh, ratepayers can't hear. So if you don't mind talking into the mic, that would be terrific. So I'm reporting at a closed session, we have a resolution moved by Councillor Zimmerman, seconded by Councillor Elliott. The council receives the closed session report regarding labor relations or employee negotiations for information. All in favor of that motion. It's carried. Thank you. Uh, minutes from previous meeting, a motion by Councillor Elliott, seconded by Councillor Potnovitz, that the minutes of the Town of Minto, April 15th, 2024, special council meeting, the uh, April 15th, 2024, and April 16th, 2024, closed session meetings, and April 16th, 2024, regular council meetings be approved. All in favor of the motion? That's carried. Uh, moved by Councillor Potnovitz, seconded by Councillor Dirksen, that the Town of Minto convene into Committee of the Whole. All in favor of that motion. Thank you. That's carried. We have a public meeting. First item on the agenda today, it's uh, ZBA 2024-01, Tammy and Sean Milne, 84 Lower Street North, Clifford. Uh, I will act as the chair of this public meeting. I would like to call the meeting to order and ask uh, Clerk McRobb, to ensure that any members of the public present the present is recorded to the attendance report. So I would like to state the following. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the town of Minto before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the town of Minto to the Ontario Land Tribunal and the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of the appeal before the tribunal unless, in the opinion of the board, there are reasonable grounds to do so. So I'm going to ask Clerk McRobb to state the municipal address and the legal description of the property and the purpose and effect of the application and date notices were sent. Thank you, Mayor and Turton. The property subject to the proposed amendment is located at concession C, Part Lot 58, Registered Plan 61R10348, Part 1, and municipally known as 84 Elora Street North in the town of Minto. The subject property is approximately 5.83 hectares or 14.4 acres in size. The purpose and effect of the proposed amendment is to rezone the subject lands from Highway Commercial Exception C215 to Highway Commercial C2 Zone. This rezoning will remove the site specific uses currently permitted and allow all uses permitted in the C2 zone. Additional relief may be considered at this meeting. The notices were mailed to the property owners within 400 feet or 120 meters of the subject property, as well as the applicable agencies and posted on the subject property on April 2nd, 2024. The following reports and comments were received and attached for council to review uh, from the County of Wellington, from the Town of Minto, as well from Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority. Back to you, attorney. Thank you. So I'd like to ask uh, Jessica, our county planner, to provide comments regarding the proposed amendment to the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw no number 01-86. Jessica Brown, you're on. Thank you. Um, so I just want to take a quick second. We're going to introduce Jamie. This is our junior planner, um, at the County of Wellington. Um, she's part of our team. Um, Welcome to the Town of Minto, Jamie. Thanks for coming. Um, okay, so back to the report, ZBA 2024. Um, so this property is located in um, the north um, end of the herd, and the applicants originally were applying to rezone this from the site specific C2 3 zone to the straight C2 zone. The current zoning on the property does permit um, 
a miniature golf course and golf driving range, as well as some sort of pieces with that. Um, this was brought in um, a number of years ago as original services. I think that we were looking for a little bit of time when we were just doing some sort of piece on the property. Um, but now that services have been brought to the property line, we um, are going to do this alteration to the C2 zoning um, to allow the full range of pieces there. Um, the official plan designation on this property is highway commercial, industrial, and residential. Um, with two special policy areas. So these uh, changes were made in 2020 um, that brought in the special designation that we have there as well as the special policy areas. Um, so after further review of the application, um, planning staff are recommending that just the front portion goes to a C2 zone and then the rear portion uh, limits certain uh, commercial uses that would be considered sensitive land uses due to the search of is located um, just behind this property. Um, and then also introduce some light industrial zoning on that property so we can be a bit more in the range of land designation. Um, so today it's just the statutory public meeting and we have discussed with property owners about this highway commercial in the front and changes to that portion of the property. Um, and they, I believe, Terry mentioned that they would use the okay with the other services as opposed to just the service that's really supposed to have the front portion of the property. Um, and at this time, we don't have a proposal of exactly what's going on in the property, it's just going to be general zoning, um, but they would be required to do site plan approval at a later time once they think the property or themselves offer anything that has been um, in the prior plan for site plan assess and impose further requirements on the property. Um, that sets up for administration. Okay, Jessica, thank you. Next is the Town of Minnow Planning Coordinator, uh, Sam, Sam, Sam Ahai, to provide comments regarding the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw number 01-86. Sam. Thank you. Uh, so I think Jessica has covered uh, it uh, very well and uh, I wanted uh, to add that the application has been circulated uh, to the relevant agencies and the property owners within uh, 400 feet of the subject property with no consent uh, being brought forward to the town. The town has received a comment from uh, Saigon Valley Conservation Authority that a small area in the uh, southeast of the property falls within the Saigon Valley Conservation Authority approximates a screening area due to uh, the due to nearby uh, floodplain potential potential uh, development within this area may require uh, an Saigon Valley Conservation Authority permit before uh, commencement. And the uh, town of Minto staff have reviewed and discussed the application and public work required payment from. Uh, front edge fees, uh, water, a storm, and sanitary connection fees. Uh, in addition, a D2 study is essential to determine the necessary setback uh, from the sewage treatment plan to the lot line uh, for any proposed sensitive land use that may be required, uh, depending on the proposed development uses in the future. Okay, thank you. Next up, uh, we have uh, Tammy. Tammy. Uh, is there anything uh, that you would like to add? Tammy, would you mind just uh, going to the podium, please? I'll pick up the mic. Terry will turn it on. And uh, if there's any questions or anything you want to add? I think you just wanted to hear my voice on the mic. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, I don't have anything to add at this time, except for um, finding out that front portion that we talked about being zoned C2 and the amount of land that was going to be zoned industrial. Um, if I could get a breakdown on what the acreage of the C2 zoning is and um, moving forward what the acreage of the industrial would be, just so that I have those um, um, acreages in my mind. 
Uh, I have not calculated them out yet, but okay. I'll, I'll uh, follow up with you. Okay. You know, Tammy. Perfect. So that's everything that Perfect. I have. Perfect. So if you just want to stay there, uh, you might have to. Sure. A question or two. So um, I'm going to ask uh, any persons wishing to speak to the application. Seeing none, I'm going to open it up to council. Opportunity for questions. No questions. Then. Uh, there's nothing else, uh, Tammy? Did you, did no, okay? that's everything. Thank you. So I'm, thank you very much. Thanks. There's no questions. Uh, we're good to go. Okay. Um, if you wish to be notified of the decision of the Council of the Town of Minto in respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment application, you must make a written request to the clerk of the Town of Minto at 5941 Highway 89, Harrison, NOG 100 or by email at uh, annaline at town.minto.on.ca. Okay, there's one seat up the front here if you want to uh, come up to the front, ma'am. Don't like to get you right up the front, but <laughs> yeah, you can sit there. Thanks, Tammy. So we're, uh, okay, so if there's no further comments, uh, I'd like to adjourn the public meeting. All right, so we're moving into delegations. We have two got delegations today. First one being uh, Staff Sergeant Smith and uh, Chairman of the Board, uh, Councillor Earl Campbell. So if you guys don't mind doing the same thing, move up to the podium. Uh, so you're a delegation, gentlemen, and uh, you basically have uh, 10 minutes. Uh, after you're finished, okay, uh, yeah. we'll have uh, council can ask questions. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Turton. So, so I bring greetings from the Wellington County OPP Detachment Board, uh, which is the new name of the Police Services Board as of April the 1st. So for those of you not aware, the legislation changed on the 1st of April, which changed the composition of our board and also changed the name of the board. So uh, the report that Staff Sergeant uh, Smith is going to review with you is based on the old legislation was supposed to have been done by the inspector, but unfortunately he got called away for services outside of the county today. So Staff Sergeant Smith is going to stand in for him. So I'm just here to say hello. I'm kind of the eye candy. He's the real entertainment. Um, but uh, we're more than happy to answer your questions. This is the second of three uh, council delegations that we've been asked to do since that report came up. So we appreciate the opportunity to come out and say hello and to answer your questions. And uh, with that, I'll give it to Staff Sergeant Smith. So, so for those that uh, don't know, uh, uh, Councillor Earl Campbell is a county councillor in Ward, I'm going to say two or three, two. And uh, he is, uh, like he said, the chair of the OPP, so, as designated by the warden. Go ahead, Staff Sergeant Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, happy to be here and thank you for the invitation as uh, mr campbell mentioned inspector thomas unfortunately had to uh, be elsewhere today on some last minute uh, business that came up so he's asked me to review his report from 2023 it's always difficult because i'm so busy with the the day-to-day -day 2024 stuff right now it's um but it's also good to look back and see some of the successes and uh, a lot of the endeavors and great efforts we did last year 2023 uh, was another busy uh, year for us. We're one of the largest OPP detachments in the province. And uh, although this is a safe community, we keep our members quite busy um, protecting Town of Minto and all the other municipalities around here. Uh, the highlight staffing wise was probably the promotion of myself, the staff sergeant last January, but um, at least that's what some people say above that though we did welcome two recruits to our county last year and three experienced police officers so the opp has been um, very active in recruiting and i can tell you in 2024 we're already ahead of those numbers but uh, we did have five people join our team from outside the agency and we also have continual transfers that come in and out of the county from other neighboring and um, other detachments in, in the province 
our emphasis continues to be on proactive traffic enforcement and we do a lot of ride locally here uh, because in Wellington County and with the OPP we concentrate on what we call the big four categories of traffic offenses so that's speeding and careless driving distracted driving and impaired driving those are um, the offenses that are causing the concerns to our community and um, unfortunately sometimes serious collisions and death despite our best efforts last year we did have 18 fatal accidents in the county of wellington um, so traffic enforcement continues to be a leading uh, emphasis of our operations our crime unit was very busy as well including um, arrest of three people in the jason brown uh, death which uh, he was abducted from town of minto a few years ago and um, that death investigation is continued from that day and is still continuing but there's three people charged last year the crime unit also worked on um, I found remains, three other historical homicides, three active homicides, um, and of course the Short Reed, Lucas Short Reed uh, failed to remain NBC from outside of Alma from many years ago. The crime unit was able to uh, lay charges last year as well. I'm trying to go quickly here. Um, so much to talk about, but we, I know we only have 10 minutes the community street crime unit is what we call our uh, unit of plainclothes detectives that tackle drug and property crime and they were very busy last year continue to be very busy 2024 um, if you look at our total number of drug offenses the numbers have gone down in the last number of years but that's because uh, if you go back three four five six years a lot of those numbers were marijuana possession charges, which is no longer um, obviously an offense in Canada. However, the large scale investigations into the drugs in our community, the meth, amphetamine, trafficking, the cocaine, fentanyl, a larger priority of our, our street crime unit. So those investigations are very time consuming and require a lot of resources. And with the team we have in place, uh, we got a new detective sergeant last year who joined us. Um, they've really hit the ground running and there's been lots of warrants. I'm sure you read in the paper. So I'm, I'm happy to pass on their success because along with traffic, it's the drug uh, trade in this area, which causes our community the biggest problems. And, and those don't just uh, unfortunately, there's overdose deaths, but there's lots of property crime that spill out from um, the, the drugs in our community. The other big change I'll report on quickly is our traffic unit has uh, developed a program we call Enhanced Enforcement. So we receive many, many traffic complaints throughout the year and through our own internal mechanisms we we know where there's lots of accidents we know where there's lots of arrests lots of charges also from members of the public obviously and also from sometimes politicians who report their constituents complaining about areas we have a, a well in county called the black cat which uh, is part of our repertoire of devices we use but there um, for those who don't know black cat is a device we can put up on a target area road and it measures the speeds going by and it's unobtrusive it's not um, like one of those speed cameras you see where you can see the speeds most people would know they're driving past this thing and it's recording everyone's speed the results later and um, that's been in place for a while but we've now moved to taking those results directly and i noticed in town of minto last year for instance we had the black hat up in uh, the blind line area 89 and we also had it uh where else there was another mental one here i'm pretty sure queen street queen street, oh. queen street so we put those up um and 
and if the results indicate that there is a concerning problem in that area, then we dedicate further resources and report back on that. Whether those resources are traffic unit uh, patrols, um, frontline officer patrols, dedicated uh, handheld radar patrols, extra ride, whatever the we determine might be the best way to do it. Overall, we don't get as many complaints from Mental as we do from some of the other uh, jurisdictions in Welland County. So, but we we appreciate being part of the community here. We patrol on marine, we patrol on snowmobiles, um, and motorcycles as well as our cruisers and foot patrol. Last year, we also opened up our collision reporting center, and we now currently have it open in all three detachments. We have three. We have uh, three clerks that are hired, civilian clerks, and that has helped the community. So now with its, uh, a minor, what we call property damage MVC, so one that's not, doesn't have injuries involved or um, possible impaired or other criminal, to your county, um, local county now, you can go to Tiviedale here, for instance, or Fergus, if you happen to be down there, or Rockwood, and report your minor collision, and uh, our clerks will take the details, report it to the MTO, and uh, deal with the insurance companies from there. Our top three MVCs, 2023, haven't changed. Um, they continue to be number one cause of motor vehicle collisions in our area are wild and domestic animal collisions, mostly deer. Number two, main reason is falling too closely. Number three is failing to yield. Is that better? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Radio. Try that. Try Terry's. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, <clears throat> we have a auxiliary unit and a community safety unit. Uh, youth resiliency officers that do a lot of work in our community over and above everything that our frontline officers do out there day to day. And we work actively with Crime Stoppers Wellington and with Safe Communities Wellington in a lot of initiatives have done good work. Get to the statistics. Um, the calls for service for Wellington County did increase 9% last year and Sorry, I went fast. Who's following here? You're trying to go to the stats. Get to the, there we go. So the top left one is our calls for service. Uh, it's gone up. Actually, as you can see on that graph, it's a little higher last year than on any of the previous years. The really low number from four years ago was obviously COVID uh, dropped quite a bit. And since the, as we've come out of the COVID thing, you can see the calls for service has gone up. That's also not surprising because as we all know, the population um, of Welland County is growing and there's new developments occurring in all our communities, including Minto. So uh, I don't think it's surprising. Our calls for service are going up commensurate with that. Our top 10 calls for service, our number one complaint in Welland County are traffic complaints. So we had 2,500 of them last year. Those are people um, phoning in uh, on their cell phone or coming home and reporting uh, dangerous driving, possible impaired, some of the things speeding. Motor vehicle collisions are up there. We did about 2,000 last year. Police assistance and police information are just, uh, they're, they're two of the top four, but that's kind of a catch-all categories. Police information, in, you know, if West Gray had a robbery in their area and they're letting us know that the suspect might be coming this way, that would be received as a police information from another agency or someone's phoning to let us know that uh, the road might be shut down. So it captures a lot of different uh, things, um, but some of the more concerning numbers that are in the top 10, domestic disputes or inter intimate partner violence. We had over 800 last year. It's a, it's a concern obviously, and it keeps our officers busy each and every day, as, as well as mental health occurrences. We had 700 of them last year in Welland County. Um, and those take significant resources, both uh, the domestic dispute investigations and mental health calls. We also did a lot of ride um, and traffic hazards. 
suspicious persons, and then theft made the top 10 as well. Violent crime has been pretty steady. Uh, the line at the top left goes pretty much straight across. So a couple of blips, but overall, it's the last 10 years, it's been about the same. Uh, when you consider that we have increased our populations and stuff, uh, perhaps the number of violent crimes has gone down per capita, but its overall numbers are roughly the same. And our number one violent crime is assault. We had over 200 assaults reported and investigated to us last year. We also had over 100 threat calls. Unfortunately, we had uh, 74 sex assault investigations, 70 criminal, 69, sorry, criminal harassments. And then there's the other violent crimes that are thankfully a lot lower. Welland County and Minto do remain some of the safest communities by these stats in all of Ontario and Canada. But, you know, it'd be nice to have zero violent crime for sure. Property crime as well is very, uh, the averages are pretty steady. The last few years have been um, pretty similar, a little bit lower last year, and our averages are pretty flat. Frauds are the ones that have gone up a lot. So we had a 30% increase in fraud. Uh, and again, that's I'm, probably most people in this room would nod at that because I know there's a lot of people getting phone calls and emails and phishing schemes and there's so many frauds in today's day and age and uh, that are inundating us all over the place. So we've done a lot of presentations. Some of you may be into some of our community presentations on the subject of fraud. We continue to do those actively to get out the information on how to combat them. Um, we also have support from the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. But frauds are frustrating because not always is the suspect here in Welland County, which makes it a lot more difficult for us to investigate. But we have laid charges and we did lay a lot of charges last year and we laid, uh, we stopped some frauds in progress in and around this area, Mount Forest, Drayton, for sure, where people were arrested. While frauds have gone up, our thefts have gone down from where they have been the previous year. Theft from vehicle has gone way down. Unfortunately, uh, vehicle theft has gone up, but that's, uh, that's kind of, uh, if you read the news, that's happening in a lot of places as well. Arson is the one that uh, went the biggest change, but we did arrest uh, in Mount Forest, for instance, there were some arsons and we did arrest to charge that perpetrator for those. Going to the drug crime page, you can see that's that decline. That's mostly from those numbers on the left from 10 years ago, nine years ago, or mostly possession of marijuana charges. So while the numbers look a lot lower currently, those are almost all exclusively major drug charges of methamphetamine, cocaine, fentanyl primarily are the ones we see around here. People trafficking it and uh, putting it out on our streets, bringing it into our county. Going to the traffic stats, um, even though our ride was up considerably, we did uh, almost 700 ride occurrences last year in Welland County. Our criminal traffic stats are pretty steady the last five years and they were much higher before that. So we're still not trying to figure out that because we're doing more ride, we're doing answering more traffic complaints, we're doing more accidents, but uh, there's not as many people we're finding drunk as we did a few years ago. So maybe that's a good sign. But we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, the one thing that has changed is we have better tools and resources to investigate and charge people for driving under the influence of drugs. Um, we have a lot of officers, almost everybody now, trained in um, sobriety field testing, which allows them to check at the side of the road for people on under the influence of marijuana and other drugs. While we still have the roadside screening devices and intoxilizers at our detachments to enforce the impaired driving by alcohol. Um, our impaireds are pretty similar from last year. Dangerous operation did go up, but the fail to stop uh, criminal code charges went down. Collisions are pretty similar. Um, the only difference is with the opening of our collision reporting centers. 
more than half of those are now being investigated by the civilian clerks and not being investigated by uniform frontline officers. So that has redirected a lot of resources back into having your police officers patrol your streets and roads and answer your calls rather than um, doing the paperwork on a minor fender bender per se. So that, that program is successful and now that we've opened it up in all three locations with the clerks now in place it will continue to free up more officer time um getting near the end here looking at charges our charges have dropped uh, both provincial charges and criminal charges have gone down a little bit the last few years the uh the big and that brings us to the end, but uh, the big change in charges is uh, 2023, we brought in-car cameras into all the OPP detachments in West Region, including Wellington. So all of our marked OPP cruisers have cameras now that uh, record the event going on in front of the car. And also if anyone happened to be in the back seat, it uh, records them and what they say and do. And so that is helping immensely with the evidence in court, as you can imagine. So now you have documented evidence of the driving offense in front of you um, or of the offender's behavior in the back seat. I know that was a rush recap of 2023 and I'd love to talk about each and every one of those areas in more detail, but we just don't have the time. Mr. Mayor, I'm almost, so available for any questions i want to be first in uh, thanking you for coming we appreciate this uh, uh, and uh, i have no issue with you going over 10 minutes today because a lot of this stuff is is important to us and our citizens and, and when you say that uh, we're in a safe community that that gives us uh, faith question in reference to this report uh, there's a lot of information and yes. I know that we went through it very quickly today. It's on the Wellington County. Am I correct in saying it's on the web Wellington County yes. website? So yes, anybody is. that wants to go on it on the site. And uh, the other thing that I just like to say, uh, I like that uh, non-emergency number that you put forward there at three four three five seven seven zero. You know, if there's something going on in the community that you want our uh, OPP detachment to know you pick up the phone and you phone that number and you leave a message and and they uh, check into it so yeah. yes it's a message I always like to give out for the years is uh, we we work 24 7 seven days a week so you know sometimes we we run into people and they're like oh I saw this suspicious person you know a couple nights ago and I, but I didn't want to phone and bother anyone well no we get we're here to answer those calls, and we have people working 24-7. And 911, if you have any, you need someone there right away, you phone 911 any time of the day. We have a one 310 1122 is the other number, which also gets to our dispatch center 24 hours a day. So if it's maybe not life-threatening and you don't feel like it's 911, but it's still it's 3.30 in the morning or whenever, Two o'clock in the afternoon, you want to report a suspicious person or something to our attention, you can phone the one trip wait number, 310 11 22. That reaches our comp center 24 hours a day. And then there's the office number, which you mentioned, 519 343 5770, which is the, the Tividale office. And that's Monday to Friday, 8 to 4 ish. Um, and that's like a step down. So you might want to leave a message for an officer or, or, or give a have want someone to phone you back about a traffic complaint you have or a question you have about uh, firearms licenses or anything along those you can leave a message or talk to someone there monday to friday but by all means if it's urgent or something we should know right away give us a call on those other numbers 24 7. thank you so i'm going to open it to council does uh, anyone have any uh, burning question for uh, staff sergeant smith and all these stats uh, are on the website. But I, I should point out, if you phone that 343-5770 number, you'll likely get Ryan Binkle's wife most of the time. Okay. <laughs> One of our outstanding young employees, so. So, Staff Sergeant Smith, if there's any two or three things, two things that you leave with us today to help 
us improve. Uh, I mean, likely, I can, I think two years ago was lock your vehicles at night or take them inside or don't leave your stuff out in your driveway. Um, things like that. Is there something you can tell us that uh, we can take away? I was going to say that very one. We, we still continue to have problems, especially in the rural areas, farming communities, people leaving uh, vehicles and lock keys there. So please don't make it easier for the thieves in our area. Um, but yeah, the other one I just mentioned, phone us anytime with any of your concerns or complaints or, uh, you know, people, you guys see what's going around your community and you know what belongs there and what's out of place. So bring that forward to us because it's a lot easier to proactively investigate it and to stop something from happening than having to deal with a, a loss later. So. And I'm, the only last thing I'll say is we're excited. Like with these new changes in technology, uh, we're getting body cameras. Probably when you hear this report next year, we'll probably be reporting upon our body cameras we're gonna be getting um, forecasted end of the summer, beginning of the fall. In-car cameras already help. We have cell phones for the officers that have a lot of capabilities for a lot of cool things. So we're excited about doing a lot of good work, building on our enhanced traffic enforcement in other areas. So I think next year, uh, it's, all, it's all positive. That's the other thing I'll say. Great, so on behalf of the, of the bunch of us, uh, we'd like to thank you for coming. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Campbell has got his hand up. If I could, one takeaway for the members of council and the public. Um, after Staff Sergeant Smith has gone through all those stats you can see that they're very analytic data-driven uh, organization if you as a counselor are receiving a complaint about speeding or your neighbor's dog or whatever it is it does you no good to receive that and do nothing with it if it gets into the opp database that's what they're tracking so when we talked about the black cats for example those positionings are being driven by complaints people saying that you know everybody's speeding up concession three we put a black hat up, we come back five weeks later or two weeks later, whatever it is, and we say, okay, here's the actual analytic data from that legitimate complaint. We move to enforce enhancement. If it's just a perception, which quite often it is, that it's not really an issue, but you think everybody's speeding, we then have the analytical data to say, we placed it for eight days, we did 22,000 vehicles, we were 20 kilometers over on 70% of done. So I just encourage you, you know, anytime you're dealing with it, we always want to listen to the public. We want to hear what they've got to say, and we want to record that information that helps us to focus the enforcement. So thank you for your time. It was great to come up. Thank you very much. And if you fellows want to get back to your day, or unless you want to stay and uh, listen, uh, like thanks again for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. We'll move along to our second delegation. We have uh, Tim Dofer, Stefan Von Mullen, and Dan Sinkler. We want to talk about uh, neutral public spaces. And who is your spoke spokesman, uh, Jim? Yeah, three. Okay, that's good. So, if, again, if you don't mind, I, I understand that, you know, 10 minutes is short. Mm -hmm. uh, we did let our, uh, our staff sergeant go on a little long there, possibly, but uh, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, Mel Tootin and members of council and fellow attendees. For those who don't know me, my name is Jim Dotful. I'm a member of the First Nations, so I can speak directly about racism, bigotry, and hate. I grew up in Mendel Township. I've attended school and raised my family here. I volunteer in this community to give back, as I feel it's important to give to a community where you live and play. Why are we here today? We care about this community. We went out and we engaged the community and we asked for the input. We did it the old fashioned way. We went door to door. We spoke to several that are afraid to voice their concerns. One thing I might add about the petition is that there was a lot of people afraid of losing their jobs if the employer found out. What does that say about any employer who has forced their employees to their beliefs? Over the last couple of days, there has been several posts on social media 
that should indicate the council why we should be neutral in public spaces. Promoting any one group over another, we are dividing the community. We are, we are not creating, we are creating division and not unity. This is why we need to be neutral. The decision to promote one group drives division. We all deserve equal rights. We deserve to be free and to feel safe. It is not the role of council to make decisions for our rate payers on personal choice matters. Therefore, we would request a new bylaw that would ensure crosswalks, flags, banners on public property remain mutual. Neutral. After talking to citizens of mental and listening to their concerns over the past several weeks, we have received an overwhelming amount of support in favor of a new bylaw. 900 plus rate payers have signed the petition. We believe that maintaining political neutrality in public spaces is essential to foster a respectful and inclusive community. By implementing this bylaw, we aim to create an environment where all residents feel respected and included. Promoting any one single group in public space will handle this inclusion. Public spaces should not favor any specific, specific group Instead, they should be neutral. The goal is to strike a fair balance that respects everyone's rights. While we have the right to express our opinions, ideas, and beliefs, public spaces should maintain neutral environment to avoid exclusion and to ensure fairness. These guidelines should respect individual rights while maintaining neutrality. Elevating any one group in public spaces can be contentious. Supporting your group can be done on your own personal premises, and you have the right to do so. Remember that we're all committed to respecting everybody's rights. And part of being diverse and welcoming is understanding those differences. We are requesting that council does not pay favorites, and I thank you, and we wait a decision on this request in a timely manner. I will pass it over to my friend, Stefan. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. So I think, Steph, if you don't mind, uh, just hanging back from the mic two or three inches. Or something. I mean, you, you, well, so we do need it for yeah. the for the video. Right. <laughs> yes, it is. Is it? So, yeah. So what we want is. Uh, it, I look. Is this good enough? Uh, you will yeah. have to be slightly closer to. Turn it. the mic up. Like turn it up a little bit if you don't mind. Yeah. Does that work? Okay. Yep. Okay. Good afternoon, members of Minto Township. This is a good, a very good place to live. First of all, everybody knows me. I'm Stefan von Mullen, a very outspoken citizen of the Minto Township. I'm very passionate about farming. And this is not about farming, so I had to write this down because it, it is very important to me too. But anyway, here we go. My wife and me, we both emigrated some 50 years ago to Canada. Raised. <clears throat> um, I've never really experienced racism. It was, it was good for me. And for the last 38 years, I left in Minto Township, raised a family, and got involved with soccer when the boys grew up did a little bit of scouts and joined the wellington dairy committee and i've always felt welcomed i felt included <clears throat> and it, this is why it's very hard for me and that's why we got with jim this is a very deep personal decision this flag issue. And because we emigrated to Canada, 
I had to study your constitution. When I became a Canadian citizen in 1996, and I was quite impressed. There is the Charter of Rights. It says it's your right, not your privilege, not your duty. It is your right to have a choice. And it is your right to express that choice. But the big issue is now with this. It doesn't say in the Charter of Rights. It takes respect from you. Because if I have the right, so do you, so do you, so do you, and so do you. We all have the same right. So it takes respect to make this work. So anyway, Minto is a very good place to live. And we got to keep it that way. It always was. And that's exactly why I've got involved with this petition. This has nothing, nothing to do with hate or discrimination. This is about rights, very simple rights. And the problem is I grew up in a very direct democracy. In those two years, I lived at home in a voting age. I went 14 times to the ballot box. Now, this is maybe just wishful thinking. But coming to Canada, you have an indirect democracy. So we do elect you council member. And I feel just for seven members, this is a very hard decision to do. You should at least ask the people on that because this is a very personal decision. Has, I feel like we have an indirect democracy here. So we vote you people in to give you the right to vote for me which I would hope, but I probably will never see it, that I can go do the voting myself. <clears throat> so the problem is, see, you know, I got, I got the walked away. So the problem is now, how are we going to solve this issue here with the system in place? So I really believe we need to, you, we should, as people, we should have some input on some of those deep personal decisions. And I personally believe there are ways to do this, but it takes, it takes basically communication on your part. And to explain this to you is, it's very simple. About, it was Monday, Monday the 23rd of April, there was a meeting in Harrison at 7.30 about the future planning in Minto Township. And if I would not know Jim, I would have not known about this meeting. And it, to me, that's quite important, I think, that we have input on the future. So my wife and I went, and I was quite surprised. On something important like this, 12 people showed up. On, in Harrison. I was told later in the afternoon in Palmerston there were five people. I don't know how many that showed up in Clifford. But the problem I'm seeing with this is there's very few people had input on the future. You're going to get a report probably from those meetings and then you're going to make a ruling. And I think, sorry, that is it's not what I think is democracy and fairness. Because to me, democracy is very simple. You ask the people, and 50% of the voters plus one vote make going to make that decision. And I would stick with that. But anyway, in short, of I would, I would like to. I would like to uh, show you that this decision um, is very much about communication. And I would like to really say this, that when we went out looking for those signatures, I was really surprised of how many people that I talked to, and they were not your talks, I can tell you that. I spent probably two weeks 
looking only talking to maybe 100, 120 people. Those talks went sometimes longer than they should, but it was very good for me. So anyway, I was surprised that there were actually people afraid. They would agree what we're looking for, but they were afraid to sign it. And that, I think, is not right. And to me, the same is probably goes for the LGBTQ. They're probably the same thing. They feel fear. That's why they don't come out and tell how they feel. And that bothers me a lot. Because in 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada made a very interesting decision. And it, it talked about the opening prayers of municipal councils. And I really like what the Supreme Court said there. And if we all would obey by that, what the Supreme Court said, there'd be probably less issue. And I would like to read you that decision if that's OK. The Supreme Court of Canada, sorry, I put my glasses on. This right. Sorry, this is part of getting older. The Supreme Court of Canada has emphasized the importance of maintaining a neutral public space that is free from discrimination and allows freedom to believe or not to believe. In the decision, they stated by expressing no preference, the, <clears throat> the state ensures that it preserves a neutral public space that is free of this <clears throat> discrimination and in which true for freedom to believe or not to believe is enjoyed by everyone equally, given that everyone is valued equally. This principle underscores the need for institution and the state to remain neutral, avoiding favoritism toward any particular belief or non-belief. The goal is to protect every person's freedom and dignity while promoting diversity. In short, I would, in short, we think, and I'm this very sure, hanging up flags are not going to change a darn thing. It starts with everybody to make the change. It is me, it is you, it is everybody. You got to live by example and promote honesty, respect, fairness, responsibility, volunteer, and communicate. And that is what the Canadian flag represents to me. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Dan, you're next. I'll be short and sweet. Um, Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. so, go ahead, Dan. For all of you that don't know me, my name is Dan Sinclair, active member in the community um, and fellow taxpayer. I'm here today in support of the petition brought before you. I want to make it extremely clear this petition is not against a specific group, but however, in full support of neutral zones within our communities, public spaces, to be simply put. You have over 900 signatures from members within your community who support this introduction of neutral zones. I'm going to repeat, but there were more people that wanted to sign it that I talked to as well, but they were in fear. My question to you is what are you gonna do with that number of concerned constituents? Over 900 people do not feel included within your community, and it's clear to see that your agenda of inclusivity is failing and rather creating a bigger divide within our community and apparently a huge misunderstanding. I would like, to I would like you to seriously consider the endorsement of all public spaces being neutral zones where only the Canadian flag and the town of Minnow flag are flown. 
This should be put into bylaw immediately, keeping all public community zones fair and neutral for everybody. <clears throat> if people choose in our community to want to fly different flags on their own personal property, that, be, that should be their choice and they should do it proudly. If you truly want to keep diversity, equity, and inclusivity within our community, we need to fly one flag on all of our public properties, funded by all the taxpayers that we all fall under and have for centuries, the Canadian flag. Have we forgotten the meaning behind what our nation's flag represents, symbolizing pride, strength throughout Canadian history? Or perhaps, have we been too busy being blinded by others? Thank you. Okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, do we have questions? No questions for our delegation? All right, See, seeing none, uh, we will take this. Uh, so this is a delegation and the questions are coming from council um, and the delegation is complete. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, we accept your uh, delegation today and we'll take it seriously. And uh, the next step, Annalene, is for us to discuss and uh, get back. That's correct, yes. I, I know that there'll be a report coming forward in the next uh, few couple meetings uh, in regards to banner policies. Um, it was uh, something that we had passed last year that that better policy would come forward. Mark, do you have something to add? No. Uh, thank you, Mayor Turton. As uh, Clerk McRobb stated, there will be a policy coming forward in the next uh, couple of meetings with regards to the use of the banner arms in the downtowns. Okay. Thank you very much. So. Folks can stay for the rest of the meeting, or you can leave whichever you want. But we'll uh, we'll get back to the to the delegation. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Yes. Yep. yep. Oh. It's coming up. Sorry, we're just waiting. Oh, so we're, we're just waiting. We'll, yeah. we'll say that. We're, uh, uh, we're just going by the agenda. So next on the agenda is uh, public question period. And uh, if there's anybody that wants to speak, uh, the mic's yours. State, state your name. And I, I guess I <coughs> neglected to say that earlier. State your name. And... Uh, Uh, my name is Yoke Lee Vanderkoff, and I live in Palmerston, and I have actually two questions. So the first question is, how is it that a supposedly neutral petition is really a deceitful cover for hate and discrimination against the existence of our LGBT community, which is simply gender, which is a human right. It is not politics. Gender being something we are all born with in various forms for millennia. But here it is directed against the LGBT community. The second question I have is how can we be neutral when we hear comments like, I'm sick and tired of having their sexuality shoved down my throat. If the crux is about sexuality, as opposed to fairness, as was mentioned, then maybe the petitioner should instead have drawn up a petition to support the town in addressing sexual assault, rape, and incest in our community. Thank you. 
Thank you, Yokely. Um, any, anybody else? Uh, Hi, thanks, Mayor Turton and Council. I'm Caitlin Hall. I live in Harrison. Um, I own a business and I'm part of the Minto Pride Committee. And I just had a question or a couple questions about the methodology uh, with regards to the petition. I'm not familiar with, I guess, the rules and regulations and how a petition um, obtains people's names. So I just wanted to clarify if there was like an age limit, do you have to be above the age of 18 to sign a petition? If there's a methodology for obtaining signatures, like what the, the script is that the so-called witnesses used. Um, and I just wanted to draw attention, Council, to uh, the correspondence on your agenda for the meeting tonight. There, even before the names on the petition went became public record, there was people already reaching out to the town of Minto saying that their names ended up on the petition um, in sort of unethical ways. They weren't really the point of the petition or the meaning of the petition wasn't really explained to them. So there was people reaching out to retract their names from the petition. And we've heard of a number more since then that feel like they were sort of hoodwinked into signing uh, the petition. So yeah, I just questioned the ethics behind that petition and if the number of 900 is really a, a valid number. So I don't know who can answer that question or <laughs> whatever, but thank you. So we have four questions. I'm not sure how we can answer yours, uh, Yopi, uh, but can certainly go to Kate on your first question, uh, rules and regulations. Is there somebody that can answer that? Uh, I, I can speak Emily? slightly to petitions. Again, we don't set out uh, how a petition comes to us. Uh, that is up to individuals. Uh, what we do is once petitions are received, we do redact personal information such as phone numbers, emails, addresses. Uh, it's not our job to go and check to see if people are over 18 or under 18, if they live in town or they don't live in town. What is presented to us is what is presented to us. It just must be legibly written uh, and shall not contain any obscene or improper matter of language and shall be signed by at least one person and to be filed with the clerk uh, and to be placed on the agenda for consideration. Submissions must be received uh, by the clerk by the Wednesday previous to the council meeting by 12 noon. That's the rules and regulations that we have set up uh, for the town through the procedural bylaw, uh, and that, that is all. And your second question, Caitlin, was, um, I wrote down signing and ethics. Uh, um, did anybody get more than that? Yeah, I, sorry, it wasn't really a question. It was just I was pointing out in your correspondence, there's, I believe, two letters from residents whose names appeared on the petition that have would like to retract them. Yes. And since the petition has become public record, there's been more people I've heard in various ways that wish to retract their names or feel like their names were, were unethically obtained. So I just wanted to draw attention to that. Okay. Councilor Gerson, are you, are you okay with that? Yeah, no, that's, okay. uh, that's pretty All much right. what I was going to say. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for the questions. And we're going to move on. Okay. Sorry? Oh, sorry. We have uh, others. All right, so we're now in correspondence, receipt for information or requiring directions of council. Uh, we have a recommendation moved by Councillor Elliott, seconded by Councillor Zimmerman. Council receives the correspondence as information. Is there any that uh, um, you want to pull or discuss before we go further? Um, like to make mention, the, sorry, uh, go ahead, Councilor Dirksen. Um, I just want to make a comment that I found it interesting that um, there was the uh, correspondence from OF Abel regarding farmland and farmland use. And then on the heels of that was the County Wellington housing challenge. And then right behind that, or almost behind that, there were, uh, there was more than one uh, about food security. And <laughs> Both are really big issues, but but they kind of fight against each other sometimes. Um, I think in Minto we do a pretty good job of uh, trying to be careful of our farmland and trying to uh, intensify our urban areas. Um, but uh, anyways, I just found it just kind of hit me when I was going through the, the agenda that those things are just so so much 
uh, top of mind for us all the time. And and you fix one, and you kind of you kind of push another. So I just want to point out nothing to pull, just to point out. Yeah, I was uh, intrigued by the Wellington Federation of Agriculture, Mr. Barkley Knapp. I've heard him speak numerous times, and he wanted to talk about the minimum minimum distance separation. And I think we. Uh, Again, I agree with what you're saying, Councillor Dirksen, that we do a pretty good job on that. The other item that, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Is there any others that anybody want to talk about? Go ahead, Councillor Dirksen. I just had a question about B. So there's a question there at the end. Are we answering those questions or? Yes. Yeah. So I would, That's all I want. So I'm thinking, uh, just give me one second. Is that something that we might want to pull out? Uh, Mark, to uh, answer those questions. I know it's just correspondence, but important that we answer. Uh, through you, Mayor Turton, we can definitely pull it out and have a discussion. Um, CBO Kuipers is here as well. That should be able to assist with uh, answering any questions. Okay, so that's one that we want to pull out. All right, so uh, others, uh, Councillor Potnovitz, is there anything uh, you want to add to the Maintenance Valley Conservation Minutes? Source water protection. No, no, not through you, Mayor Tur uh, Turton. Um, it wasn't really a, a, anything ground shaking after that last meeting, so nothing to report this time. Okay. Um, P, then, if you don't mind, the uh, Sawbull Bayfield Maintenance and Valley Drinking. That's likely already been done. We've uh, moved ahead on that. Uh, that's to do with, sorry. Um, I'm looking at the one that they need a, a, a recommendation from us to... That's Okay, perfect. All right. So, then, um, I'll entertain a motion then, uh, Councillor Dunstein, to pull B, and we can uh, respond to that. Three, Mayor Turton, do you wish for a staff to uh, answer those questions? Is that kind of what you're motion is or I think so I don't think it's something we want to do right now but I think there's six or seven questions yep yep so can I have a second please Councillor Dirksen all in favor of that motion that's carried and then uh, if there's nothing else that we want to uh, pull out of the correspondence then uh, um, we have a mover and a seconder all in favor of the correspondence as it is uh, received thank you that's carried okay uh, committee minutes, we uh, we have none, and we have a staff report. Uh, this is uh, ECDEV 2024-007, it's a signage grant, H34, uh, A to Z, uh, Tandy Lower Street, Harrison, and I'll ask Annalene to go ahead with this. Thank you. Uh, Belinda Graham is unable to be here today, uh, in lieu usually a Treasurer Gord Duff uh, provides this report, and he is not here today. So as it trickles down, it comes to me. It's actually a good news story. It's a signage grant for A to Z. Uh, they did uh, A to Z, I should say. Um, they had a, a space in a tri retail space. Uh, it launched it, and they are now moving downtown, which is uh, great news to fill in one of our storefronts. They are just looking to have a signage grant, which would be for one thousand um, dollars, and it's proposed to reskin the existing awning. Um, in a blue non illuminated uh, vinyl fabric. Okay, so we have a motion by Councillor Zimmerman, second by Councillor Gunson. The Council Town of Minter receives the report ECDEV 2024 007 uh, signage grant H34 uh, A to Z uh, 10 Lower Street South, Harrison and Bruce. The signage grant H34 for $1,000. Questions? Randomly. Very straightforward. We do a few of these a year. All in favor of the motion. That's carried. Thank you. Second item is the, uh, I'm going to ask Sam to comment on this, the plan 2024-019, B3024, the approved consent severance at 6378 12th line. Sam. Thank you. Council application B30 slash 24 for secondary agricultural severance on 6378 12th line is currently under consideration 
by the county of Wellington, Wellington's land division committee. Uh, they are proposing to sever roughly 1.97 acres of vacant land for, uh, propose, uh, for proposed rural residential use by retaining appro approximately 1919.12 acres of agricultural land with an existing two straight dwelling on the property. The property is the, uh, designated uh, as a secondary agricultural area in official plan, uh, allowing uh, for the creation of new uh, of one new lot if the property owner has owned the property for at least five years and if the new lot is compatible with the surrounding area and has access to open public roads. The county's official plan considers secondary agricultural areas as a part of uh, the rural portion of the local municipal growth strategy. Uh, the proposed uh, lot zone agricultural natural environment and uh, will be subject to the uh, to a reduced uh, agricultural lot lot provisions, as uh, it is less than uh, 25 acres in size. Um, the zoning would permit uh, one single detached residential dwelling and accessory structures. We have recommended uh, standard uh, conditions, uh, which includes obtaining uh, an entrance permit and a drain. Uh, apportionment uh, for municipal drain two, and uh, we recommended that the council approve the land division consent with the four conditions outlined in the report. So if you have any questions, or you will be happy to answer. Okay, so we have a recommendation moved by Councilor Potterford, second by Councilor Gertson, the Council Town Amendment to recommends County Wellington Land Division Committee Approved consent application B3024 approved for land legally described as concession 12, lot 14, with the municipal address of 6378 12th line, Town of Minto, and the following conditions be considered. And there is four conditions, and I'm not going to read them, <laughs> um, but I'm going to uh, allow the council to pose questions. Go ahead, Councillor Dirksen. Thank you, Mayor Churton. Um, I'm wondering if, so this is secondary agricultural land, so there are a lot of assessments for, for this first home. Um, if they were to want to sever the existing home and a little bit of land, would that be allowed as well and then have the retained just farmland or not? Uh, I can take that one. Um, <clears throat> so in secondary ag, you're not allowed to do a surplus farm dwelling severance. So they're only good for one new lot creation. Um, so with this lot cut out of the corner, they could not come back to land division to request that the house be removed as a separate lot like we normally see with uh, surplus farm dwelling severances. Okay, thank you. Councillor Potnovitz, I see uh, that, uh, that cleared it up for me as well. Okay. So there's, uh, so the retained portion, will it have its own driveway? Uh, yeah, one of the conditions that's in the report is the okay. requirement for an entrance Should have read permit. the conditions, right? It, it, we snuck it in there, so it okay. wasn't maybe, you know, jumping out of the page. Yep. But yes, it will have a separate independent entrance that Public Works will have to verify. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay. Other questions? Seeing none, I'm, I'm going to call the question. All in favor of this uh, motion? It's carried. Thank you. We'll move along to number three. It has to do with uh, the Braemar Homes draft plan of subdivision extension request at plan 2024 020 23T 15004. Sama, go ahead. Okay, thank you. And uh, this report is for the Braemar Homes uh, draft plan of subdivision in the town of Minto. Initial approval was uh, granted by the County of Wellington on November 29th, uh, 2016 with 27 condition to address. Originally, the proposal aimed to provide 40 units, including single, semis, and uh, townhouses. The deadline for full uh, fill the conditions was initially set for November 13th, 2021. However, Braemark Home uh, acquired the land uh, 
behind the you can see behind the phase one and aim to increase density in phase two uh, of the subdivision uh, following provincial uh, following uh, provincial and uh, county policies they, ex uh, they extended the deadline to december um, 31st 2022 in september 2022 they got an additional 18 months until june 2024 to work on uh, the draft plan, allowing for the red line amendment process. Then in December 2022, they submitted the red line amendment application along with the request uh, to divide land for phase two of the subdivision. Uh, due, to, uh, the, uh, due to red line amendment delays, a further 18 months extension until December 2025 is requested. The town staff believe uh, uh, this provides adequate time to fulfill all 27 conditions and complete the required work. We recommended that the council passes the uh, resolution to support the extension, enabling the owner uh, to formally request uh, an extension from uh, the county. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a recommendation moved by Councillor Potnovich, seconded by Councillor Dirksen, that the Council Town of Minter receives the report plan 2024-020 regarding the draft plan of subdivision 23T-15004 for Braymark Homes in the Town of Minto. Further, the Council of Minto supports the request to extend the draft plan of subdivision lapsing date December 2025. Questions? nearly an extension uh, Barry, Sama? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty st um, straightforward. Um, we did have a meeting with the uh, developers or the builders on the project uh, as it does impact our Main Street reconstruction and as part of that and their traffic impact study there was a few items that needed to be addressed which have dragged things on a little bit longer than anticipated. So it's pretty straightforward and staff have no objection or issues with the request. Yeah, it's likely a good thing, the communication between the uh, developer and you and the main street, that's the county. It's likely a good thing. We did it to try and get it right. So, Okay, any, no other questions? I'm going to call the question. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. I'm going to pass the chair to Councillor Gunson to do with uh, Municipal Green. Thank you, Mayor Turton. Um, so we've got four reports today with Public Works, and uh, Ryan's going to present the first two, and they're just on Municipal Drains. You want to go ahead, right? Thank you, Councillor Gunson. Um, yeah, so the town of Minto has completed maintenance on a number of drains in the last few years, and we have finished up three of them and are requesting a bylaw in order to recover the costs uh, through the assessment schedules. And it's just a standard uh, requirement of the drainage act. Thanks, Ryan. I'll read the recommendation moved by Councillor Zimmerman, seconded by Councillor Elliott. Council of the Town of Minto receives report PW 2024-012 regarding municipal drain maintenance assessments and considers passage of the related assessment bylaw in open session. Any questions for Ryan? Seeing none, I'll call all in favor. Raise your hand. Thank you. Sorry, through you, Chair Gunson, if I can. Uh, I don't believe there's a related assessment bylaw in open session for this meeting, and that will be then at the May 21st meeting. Okay. If you can change that motion on May 21st. Oh, file on open session May 21st. How's that sound? 2024. Yeah. 2024. Let's ask a question again. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Next one, Ryan. Yes. So the next one uh, on the agenda, we have uh, received a section 78 request for an improvement to an existing municipal drain number 14. Um, portion of this covered drain is in really rough condition and uh, the property owners are looking for it to be fixed and also upsized and possibly deepened. So uh, we are asking for uh, to appoint an engineer at this stage in accordance with the drainage act. Perfect, thanks, Ryan. I'll read the recommendation, moved by Councillor Podnowitz, second by Councillor Zimmerman. The Council of the Town of Minto receives report PW 2024-013 regarding municipal drain 
14 improvement requests and appoint Streamline Engineering Inc. to represent the town's interest in this regard. Any questions for Ron? Mr. Chair, Streamline Engineering Inc. Uh, yes. Have you dealt with them before? Is that uh, somebody that we know? Uh, local? They are a local new uh, engineering firm. Uh, they recently uh, were a part of Burnside Engineering. Um, and yeah. We do know them on a couple other jobs, but uh, this is the first job Minto is using with them as a new company. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? See none, I'll ask for the vote. All in favor? It's passed. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Next report uh, Boundary Road Agreement, West Gray. Mike McIsaac. So, this is just a, an update to uh, the previous Boundary Road Agreement, which dates back uh, prior am amalgamation. Uh, it is currently uh, expired. However, the maintenance from the previous uh, agreement has been maintained on, on both uh, parties here uh, with the municipality of West Gray. Um, the uh, agreement, uh, they lays out the maintenance, uh, winter maintenance and uh, all seasonal maintenance throughout the year. And then uh, with uh, capital projects uh, being shared 50-50 uh, between municipal municipalities, they will come back on an annual basis for uh, budget approval. All costs associated to these uh, maintenance projects are uh, captured within our regular operating budget for uh, snow removal, uh, grading, potholes, uh, sign repairs, etc. Thanks, Mike. I'll read the recommendation moved by Councillor Dirksen, seconded by Councillor Elliott. <coughs> Council of the Town of Minto receives report PW 2024 014 regarding boundary road agreement. West Gray and considers approving a bylaw in regular session authorizing the mayor and clerk of the town of Minto to sign the agreement. Any questions for Mike? Mayor Turton. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this uh, new agreement, is there a timing? Is there a time? Is it time sensitive? Time sensitive? It, it has been passed with West Gray. Right. And then it's just a matter of uh, uh, Town, the, the town of Minto endorsing the agreement as well. So are we looking for uh, five year? Five years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Dirksen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I had a question about um, when you look at the number of kilometers that Minto is responsible for compared to the number of kilometers that Westbury is responsible for. Yeah. They're not exactly the same. You know, we're close. Um, is that partly because with the highway being moved, so much more of it is totally now or, or it, actually it, it's not mental but yeah it's, it's the other side of the highway or it kind of has to do with um like we're we're on a lot more of those sections than west gray is like for us to get from one location to another especially with sure. winter operations that makes sense. uh ski road and uh the minnow normie town line there that's just it just makes the most sense for yeah, us to anyway. come together yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah all right, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'll ask for the vote. All in favor? It's passed, thank you. Last one, Mike Vehicle Tender Award. So it, yeah, this is for the uh, a replacement vehicle for the wastewater department and then a new purchase for uh, the fire department. Uh, receiving one, uh, one uh, uh, bidder for the two vehicles uh, the fire department has opted to go without the uh, $7,000 red paint option um, and going with the, the black paint option. Um, this, the replacement vehicle for the wastewater department, this pricing does not include the trade-in value of a current vehicle, which will uh, go in for uh, trade-in at the time of delivery of the new truck. I'll read the recommendation moved by Councillor Potnowitz, second by Councillor Elliott. Council of the Town of Minto receives report fire slash PW 2024-003 regarding vehicle tender award and the Council of the Town of Minto award tender 2024-05 for one pickup truck and one SUV to Leslie Motors the amount of $55,523 excluding HST for the pickup truck. $47,326, excluding HST for the SUV. Any questions for Councillor? 
so you said that we still got a trade in. So we're going to our value. Have you any idea what the trade in is going to be? And and so right now we're saying we're writing a check for that amount of money. Yeah. So so trade in value typically is in around that twenty to twenty five thousand dollar mark. Okay. Uh, however, with the the markets and the fluctuations, dealerships are a little more hesitant hesitant to put a value on it when the delivery for the new vehicle is in for three to four months. It could be six months. So with that additional uh, time there, the price could fluctuate in our fair favor or in their favor. Like just with the, it all depends on what. If, if we're not happy with the trade-in value, we we, we can go to public auction with it as well. We, okay. We've done that with other vehicles before too. Thanks yeah. much. Yeah. Any other questions? I just had one. And I don't think it's for Mike, um, but the fire vehicle it's being shared with the other two municipalities, correct? The fire stones. Uh, that's correct, uh, Chair Gunson. As part of the uh, report that Chief Harrell brought forward. Um, at a previous council meeting that included a capital budget amendment. A portion of the vehicle cost is being uh, paid for by Wellington North as well as Maple Creek. Perfect. I, <laughs> Any other questions? See none, I'll ask for the vote. All in favor? That is passed. Thank you. And I'm going to pass the chair back to Mayor Turton. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Gunson. The next item on the agenda is a uh, appointment of a source protection committee member, uh, CL 2024-004, and I'll ask uh, Annalene uh, McRobb to present the report. Thank you, Mayor Turden. Uh, very quick report, a letter was received to advise that a uh, representative or reappointment of a member was required uh, for municipal grouping three. Um, John Fruin has been appointed member for the town of Minto since 2019. He advised that he would let his, uh, he would like to be reappointed again, he would stand for reappointment. Um, as you can see under the comments, he spent 27 of his 37 working careers as a licensed operator in water and wastewater treatment. Um, I am just asking uh, the council consider the reappoint support the reappointment of John Fruin. Okay, we have recommendation by Councillor Gunson, second by Councillor Zimmerman. The Council of Town of Minto receives report CL 2024-004 regarding the appointment of a source protection committee. And further, the Council of Town of Minto will support the reappointment of John Fruin to the Saugeen Gray Sobble Northern Burst Peninsula Saugeen Protection Committee for the Town of Minto. Questions? Hearing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor of that motion? That's carried. Thank you very much. And we are at announcements. And uh, Councillor Elliott, we'll start with you. Yeah, I have a I guess maybe a question more than a, um, or a request. Um, every summer we 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 get people walking around our community and enjoying the trails and, and the different things that we have. One thing we don't do is have public washrooms. I know we have public washrooms available, but they're always locked. So I'm hoping we can find a way of um, at least having them unlocked maybe from nine in the morning to nine at night, that kind of thought. So um, I know for sure behind my place, again, there's the public washrooms in there. People often stop and try the doors and you can't get in and there's no place for them to relieve themselves or, or their children. So I, I don't know what the process is or what the process should be to, should we direct staff to do this or this, I know uh, with PRAC, we don't only meet four times a year now, so the opportunity to bring it forward to them is probably not available for the summer. At least we should have it open from now, I would say, until the end of September. So uh, how that possibility, I know the staff are concerned about vandalism and they're concerned about cleanliness, but we wouldn't have anything if we worried about it. We wouldn't be able to have a park. We always got vandalism. So I, I'm not sure it has to, I, I believe it's a necessi necessity for a community to have washrooms. It's a necessity to have them open. And we'll have to deal with the vandalism and the cleanliness and do what we can to keep it. Um, I have 
and I think I've reported on this. I have when I'm at different conferences, uh, met with washrooms that can be open and are supposedly vandal proofs and cleanliness proofs, but we're up into thirty to forty-eight thousand dollar. And it was suggested that you could get grants for that, but we have the washrooms, so let's try and deal with what we can for now. So anyhow, something has to happen. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. Uh, you have a response. Uh, thank you, Mayor Turton. Through uh, through you to Councillor Elliott, I believe this was discussed at a previous council meeting um, near the end of the, I guess I'll call it sum summer season last year. Director Lubers is looking into opening the washrooms in the Palmerston Lions Park um, and taking into consideration the availability of facilities at the museum as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Potter. Councillor Gunson. Uh, just one quick thing. So I uh, I attended the uh, Clifford Outdoor Show on Saturday. Took my son and his my nephew there, and they spent some money. But I was uh, pleasantly surprised by the number of vendors and the turnout uh, at that show. So I'm sure they had great success, and uh, I'm sure it's coming back next year. So that's Thank all you. I got. Thanks. Thanks for Dirksen. I have nothing this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks for I have nothing in this out. Thank you. I have a couple things. I, I just wanted to say that uh, this is uh, uh, Nurses Week. And uh, you know a nurse, uh, the dedication, the compassion, the knowledgeable medical procedures. Thank a nurse. They're, they are our front line. And uh, when you go to the hospitals, why they're always there for us. So, second thing uh, is tree planting on Saturday in Clifford. We have a thousand trees that uh, we're going to plant uh, down around the place treatment facility. We have it, uh, so I'll just read this. Uh, Mental Clifford Trails at the east end of James Street, Saturday, May 11th, 9 a.m. until all the trees are planted. It's rain or shine. Um, and everyone's invited. The, uh, this is planned by the horticultural, the rotary, and the trails. So that Saturday morning at 9 a.m., if anybody's interested in planting trees. Second thing I have here, third thing I guess, is a certificate of recognition presented to Councillor Ed Potnovitz in recognition of your outstanding achievement in the CFBA Honorary Lifetime Member in recognition for a lifetime of support of the Ontario farm building industry. May you always remember how much you are needed, respected, and valued within this community. So I just want to uh, present this to Councillor Potnovitz, and we can do it right out here. If you don't mind. Thank you. Can you just grab him a microphone? Sorry. Grab a mic. So I want to offer my congratulations to you as well, Ed. I know you've done this for a long time, and we're uh, very proud of you, especially on uh, council nights uh, when you have all the good questions for our building department and such like. So if you don't mind, I asked the question CFPA. I have two or three of those letters figured out, but uh, what is the others? Uh, it's the Canadian Fire Builders Association. And I've been a, um, attending their seminars and uh, conferences for a number of years, sat, a lot, sat on a lot of committees through them, um, especially the one for the new Farm Building Code. I was quite involved in that. So um, it's nice to be recognized. Thank you very much. Sure.
So uh, I have a resolution moved by Councillor Potnovitz, second by Councillor Dirksen, that the Council of the Town of Minto ratifies the motions made in committee of the whole. All in favor of that motion? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, notices of motion. Any notices of motion? Seeing none, I have a resolution moved by Councillor Potnovitz, seconded by Councillor Dirksen, that the Council of Town of Minto ratifies the motions made in Committee of the Whole. All in favor of that motion? Sorry? Oh, Women's Convenes and two regular councillors. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it gets um, I'm going to read that again then. Uh, moved by Councillor Plotman, it's seconded by Councillor Dirksen that the Council of Town of Minto ratifies the motion made in the Committee of the Whole. All in favor of the motion. I'm not sure we made the motion to, to go into regular council. Okay. Oh, maybe we missed that one. Yes. Uh, previous, uh, so, Annalena, if I screwed up? Uh, no, that's well, if we just want to uh, pass number 13 just again. I'm not sure if okay. it was missed or not. Thank you. So, uh, a resolution moved by Councillor Dirksen, seconded by Councillor Gunson, that the committee of the whole convenes into regular council. All in favor of that motion? It's carried. Thank you. Bylaws. 2024-025 West Gray Boundary Agreement, moved by Councillor Zimmerman, second by Councillor Elliott, that the bylaws 2024-025 be read a first, second, and third time and passed an open council, sealed the seal of the corporation. All in favor of the motion? It's carried. Thank you. And the confirmatory bylaw, moved by Councillor Gunson, second by Councillor Dirksen. The bylaw 2024-026 to confirm the actions of the Council of the Corporation of Town of Minto, expecting a meeting held May 7th, 2024, be read a first, second, third time, pass an open council and seal the seal of the corporation. All in favor of that motion. It's carried. Thank you. Adjournment. Moved by Councillor Dirksen, second by Councillor Zimmerman, that the Council of Town of Minto adjourns the meet to meet again at Paul the Mayor. All in favor of the motion. That's carried. Thank you very much for a good meeting.